Salutations everyone, my name is Alan Adra and have you ever wondered about the origins of what is potentially the biggest market in the entire world? Then in the words of a wise man, why are you here? Gaming. Gaming, gaming, gaming. As I said before, it has become one of the world's biggest entertainment markets in the world, and it's also one of the youngest. The television was first invented in 1927, cinema was invented in 1895, and gaming? Well, that's what we're here to learn about. Let's take a trip down memory lane, going beyond consoles such as the NES and the Sega Master System, all the way back to the arcade to see if we can find the first ever video game here. It's the 1970s and video games only existed as novelties for programmers and technicians to go, hey look at me losers, I've got a video game, I'm so cool. In 1971, Bill Pitts and Hugh Truck developed a coin operated computer game called Galaxy Game at Stanford University. The game was inspired by another game called Space War, a space shooter where two spaceships controlled by different players would duke it out to see who could shoot the other. However, only a few prototypes of Galaxy Game were ever built, and before the game was even put somewhere on display, Nolan Bushnell informed them that he was making his own game for a much lower price. That game was Computer Space. Um, uh, a very original name, if I do say so myself. Created by Ted Dabney and Nolan Bushnell, the machine was able to be built for around $100 and was the first ever coin-operated cabinet to be commercially sold. However, it wasn't very successful. It performed badly in bars and arcades, and while it did make $1 million in revenue, it didn't sell as many units as they had hoped. The pair would later go on to create Atari, and with the help of Alan Alcorn, they would go on to create Pong, which sold over 8,000 units and was deemed the commercial success that they were looking for. Now that's all well and dandy, but this is not what we're looking for. We're looking for the first ever video game, and these are the first ever arcade games. So let's take another trip back in time to find out what we're looking for. What about game consoles? Ralph H. Bear initially had the idea to create a game that could be played on a television set back in 1951. <gasps> he then began working on a device or console that would attach to a TV and play games in 1966, <gasps> and it was then released in 1972. Damn it! Right, that didn't give us the answers we wanted, so let's go further back in time, past the 70s, past the 60s, all the way back to 1958, when physicist William Higginbottom <laughs> When physicist William Higginbottom created what is thought to be the first video game. Yes, we've gone so far back in time that the only people who work on video games were people who worked on the first nuclear bomb. In 1948, Higginbottom joined the Brookhaven National Laboratories Instrumentation Group, who would hold visitors days every year in October. He deemed the exhibits to be rather dull, and he believed that he could create an attraction that would capture the visitors' interests easier by making it interactive and give them something to play with that could show off their scientific endeavours and have relevance to society. He used the group's analogue computer that could display various curves on an oscilloscope, including an arc and the path of a bouncing ball, to develop his game. After a few weeks of designing and building with the help of a technician, he had finally finished his product ready in time for the visitor's day. He called the game Tennis for Two. Ah yes, the 50s version of Pong. Visitors loved it. It quickly became the most popular exhibit, with people standing in long lines to just get a chance to play the game. After two years, Tennis for Two was retired, and the oscilloscope and computer used for the game were taken away for other uses, and Higginbottom designed a new Visitor's Day display that showed cosmic rays passing through a spark chamber. Well that's all well and dandy, but that was the first ever video game created for entertainment purposes. But that's the thing, entertainment purposes. Implied there could be something before that, so... Was there? Let's go back in time once more to Bertie the Brain in the 1950s. The earliest known publicly demonstrated electronic game was Bertie the Brain, built by Joseph Cates for the Canadian National Exhibition. With the assistance of engineers from Rogers Majestic, the four foot tall hunk of metal was incredibly advanced for the time and was designed to play only one game tic tac toe. The gameplay was simple. It was tic-tac-toe, what did you expect? 
The player could choose where they want to play their move via nine lit buttons in front of them, and the machine would respond by lighting up that mood on a larger board in front of them. The machine had people queuing up for ages to have a go on this machine as Kate changed the difficulty for each player before retiring the machine after the event and dismantling it. So, have we done it? Was Bertie the Brain the first ever video game? Technically? If you want to make sure that this is the first ever video game, first of all, we need to define the word. What is a video game? Well, to do that, we need to analyse the name. Video game. Technically, for a product to be a video game, it must be able to output a video signal onto a CRT to create an image. Or at least, that was the definition in the early days. Now, as long as it creates a video output to things such as a TV or a monitor, that's a video game. But what does that mean for Bertie the Brain? Technically, this would mean that Bertie the Brain isn't actually a video game, but an electronic one, as it displayed the output via lighting up cutouts of the shapes, rather than a video signal. So I guess in that case, Tennis for Two is in fact the first ever video game, where it's much more imaginative than tic-tac-flipping toe. Can you imagine how much of a loser you'd be if you were playing tic-tac-toe with a computer nowadays?